the soul's change of abode. Death of the body. The soul is your actual self which is immortal, which merely changes its abode after the death of the body, which has concluded its earthly progress in order to continue maturing in other spheres if it does not stay in opposition to me and thus descend into the abyss. Hence the thought that you don't have to fear death should make you very happy, that you will live although you have to leave this earth and that this life is far more pleasant and joyful than earthly life as a human being could ever be. You should look forward with cheerful anticipation to the day when your external gather will be taken from your real self, when all heaviness will fall away from you and you will be able to easily and light-heartedly lift yourselves up into your true home, which truly offers you inconceivable splendors. You should rejoice at the fact that there is no death for you because your soul will merely experience a change of abode which can make it infinitely happy. Why do you therefore fear death or anticipate the end of your earthly life with unease? Why has death become a horror for you humans? Why does it trigger in you a feeling of fear when, in reality, it is just a transition into another sphere after all? because you unconsciously sense that you did not live your earthly life correctly, and because your soul is not acquiring the light which would take all its fear away. For a person who complies with my commandments of love, who thus lives on earth in accordance with my will, has no fear of death but yearns to shed his earthly cover because he longs for his true home, because love has kindled a bright light in him and, looking ahead, he also knows himself to be near to me, where no suffering and pain, no affliction can touch him, where he feels sheltered by my love. All people could have this blissful certainty, that they will exchange a sorrowful and difficult existence for this feeling of security when they depart from this earth, if only they would live their earthly life with this aim in mind if they would always follow their inner voice which clearly informs them of my will, if they would already on earth enter into the right relationship with me, their God and Father of Eternity. The thought that their existence ends with the body's death is already the best evidence that the person's way of life does not correspond to my will, for this idea comes from the opposing spirit's influence wanting to prevent people from gaining correct realization and therefore also constantly increasing their desire to enjoy earthly existence to the full. For these people do not believe in the immortality of their soul, they impose on it the same restrictions as is the fate of the external frame. And thus they try to save a earthly life in every way, only ever considering their body but not their soul which, after physical death, has to accept a rather uncertain fate, which will be unable to experience the splendors of its true home, since due to its imperfect disposition it cannot find admission to the spheres where inconceivable beatitudes await it. Although it is still possible for the soul to detach itself from the abyss and enter into higher spheres, it nevertheless requires far more effort and exertion than on earth and will be impossible without help, yet even then the soul will have to muster its own will, which is far easier on earth. The self cannot cease to exist but it creates its own fate of blissfulness or agony, and only when people no longer consider their body as being alive but learn to recognize the soul within the body as their actual self, only when they learn to believe in the immortality of their soul, will they live more responsibly on earth and then no longer fear death either, which only concerns the earthly body but not its indwelling soul. Then they will live in accordance with his will and long for the hour when the soul will be allowed to leave its external cover in order to then enter the kingdom which is its true home. Amen.